Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And uh, today I want to uh, talk about that age old debate on RV heat ducting systems and which one's better. So you've got cabinet ducted heating, you've got floor ducted heating. And here's the thing, they're both better in different ways. Neither is always going to be the best option. They each have significant benefits and drawbacks. The other does not. And that is one thing you're going to get from us here today are both advantages and drawbacks so that you can get a fair view of this and have a better, more educated understanding of what you're getting. Uh, and that is really the cornerstone of what we do at Halet RV. And if you appreciate that, hit that subscribe button, follow along with us because we got some good stuff for you today. So first of all, just to make sure we're all on the same page here, here's what I mean by cabinet ducted heating. The ducts run through the cabinetry. I know when I say it out loud and you see it, it's pretty self-explanatory and I probably didn't have to do that. But I've learned that there are times where if I don't make it perfectly obvious what we're discussing, then it doesn't always translate. So, uh, benefits of cabinet ducted heating, really the main one that uh, makes it very attractive is that it's easier to clean the camper. There's not a hole in the floor where stuff, particulate, M&Ms and paper clips or whatever, you get the idea, can fall in there. If you spill a drink, it can't get down in there. Pet hair. Um, the, the fact that you've eliminated that kind of potential just right off the get-go sounds nice, looks nice, it feels nice. I certainly like those things. I'm no different than anybody else. Uh, the thing is, though, that's not the only reason manufacturers use it. And in truth, I think the main reason manufacturers use it is that it is very marketable, but it's less expensive. Now, less expensive is a good thing. Like, my wife will say that I'm cheap, but she means it in kind of a negative way because I tend to pinch pennies and tell Lincoln squeals. Cheap can just mean less expensive. Cheap doesn't have to mean crappy. And in this case, cabinet ducted heating is just simply less expensive. It uses a less expensive material, uh, it's a less expensive process, requires less equipment, and uh, less engineering to make it work. And all of those are good things. But a lot of manufacturers have started adopting it because they can build the same RV basically the same layout for less money than someone else and have a positive talking point to discuss. And it's not an invalid one. Like I said, easier to clean, less upkeep. Those are certainly good things. But that's not the whole story. And that's what I want to give you in this RV. On, on anything that we talk about, I want to give you the positive and the negative. So what are the drawbacks to this? Now, I want to begin this drawback section, our first drawbacks here, with a quick little housekeeping note. Remember, we sell RVs with both type of heat systems here. We carry manufacturers that use both type of heat systems here. I am not saying one is better than the other. And the reason I'm saying this is because when I start to get to a drawback section, when I try to make fair content that has positives and negatives, I've noticed a couple people for some reason seem to take great personal offense that they own an RV with a system or a function when I describe a drawback. It is, this is not directed to any specific manufacturer. This is not directed to any specific person. This is purely information to help you direct yourself to maybe which RV might work better for you. So we talked about the positives of cabinet ducted heating. What are the drawbacks? And there are a few. The first of which is that you lose some storage. Um, if you think back to that little flash footage when I breeze past the cabinet space there, you're only looking at two drawers. When we look at a floor ducted heated J flight, you'll actually see four because they had more cabinet space right there where they could put more drawers. Now, that drawback becomes less obvious the larger the RV gets. The bigger the RV becomes, the more cabinet space you organically create and the less obvious a storage loss is, but it is technically always there. The other thing, and I think this is a big thing that is not really discussed very much, is that floor ducted heating does not work as well. It is significantly less effective. And here's why. The, this is the actual like ducting that goes from the furnace to the ducts that pumps out of the cabinetry. Um, this stuff ends up making the system about 37% less efficient. And I've come up with that number, uh, not out of thin air, but actually I got that from both Jayco and Keystone Engineers. These are two unrelated companies who are both very head-to-head -head competitors who would love the opportunity to say, they're idiots, they're a liar, and we're the smart ones. And independently, they came up with almost the exact same thing. I'm willing to give that some pretty good credence. I think that's as close as you can get to some pretty hard confirmation in the RV industry. So why is it less effective? 
This stuff is uh, its greatest asset is its greatest liability. That's true of people. That's true of campers. It's true of anything, I think. Um, like, I tend to talk a lot, but it also means I tend to be annoying. <laughs> According to my wife. Um, like the salesman here. Uh, like I've been described as the face of Halo RV, but the salesmen like to call me the mouth. <laughs> More to the point. This stuff is easy to work with. It costs less. You can move it around. You can bend it. You can twist it around. You can get it around different things. That's awesome. It's also its biggest problem because think of this material. Look at its composition. It is bendy. It's ridges. It's got ridges everywhere. It is not a smooth surface. This is a fluid dynamics nightmare. That is the, the base scientific principle behind how uh, water moves through things and how air moves through air ducts in, or heat ducts, as it were. Same thing. Every little ridge is introducing uh, disturbances, uh, uh, turbulence, back pressure, back flow, things like that, causing it to be a little bit less effective. So you're losing about 30 to 40 percent of your effective heating airflow right here, right off the bat. So what uh, some manufacturers will do is they'll say, well, you just leave your furnace running longer. No big deal. Okay, well, now you're burning more propane and burning your, your, uh, your furnace at both ends. Burning your furnace at both ends? Sure, we'll set fire to the sun. Anyway, um, some manufacturers will say, we're going to compensate for that with a bigger furnace. Okay, I like the idea of a bigger furnace. It doesn't mean you're going to be chugging more propane. An eight-cylinder vehicle tends to chug more fuel than a four-cylinder. You know, that's a just a general parallel to give you kind of a reference point that you might be a little more familiar with. So the golden question, is cabinet ducted heating right for you? And I think one of the ways to look at this here is, are you really going to be cold camping when it's um, 32 and less freezing temperatures? Are you going to be camping a lot when the snowflakes are flying? Uh, well, if, if you are, then maybe it's not the best system for you. But if you're like, no, that doesn't sound like me. When it gets that cold, I'm hanging up my spurs or I'm traveling and going to warmer climates. If that sounds like it fits you, or if you're going to be camping a lot and like, there's a lot of really sandy areas around here in Southern Michigan. I know that's not just exclusive here. If there's a lot of dirt and particulate, if that's what you're expecting, it might be a little bit better system for you. So what about floor ducted heating? So what are the upsides of floor ducted heating? Well, going kind of backwards from the first one, one of the first things is more storage. You can tend to get more drawers, more cabinet space, because the ductwork doesn't have to snake through the cabinetry. It's under the floor. It's out of the way. More room for more storage? I don't know. More storage is ever the wrong answer in camping. I've never once had somebody turn into camper on trade because... You know, there's just too many cabinets in this thing. There's just way too, it's just way too convenient being able to store everything I want in here. <laughs> I don't think I ever will either. The other thing is, it is more effective at actually heating the RV. So think back to when we were talking about the properties of this stuff. All the little nooks and crannies and the fluid dynamics nerd speak that I was jazzing out there. Well, here is what floor ducted uh, vents, uh, the, the ducting looks like. It's a stamped steel, like galvanized steel material. It's like crimped into place. The edges are crimped around one another and it creates this nice smooth tube, very similar to this, that air can just whip through. Now this is technically a sample of roof AC ducting system. I call it cereal box ducting. This is made of foam instead of metal, but this is, a, this is the closest approximation I can get because the thing is, at an RV service center, we don't tend to have extra floor ducting stuff laying around because that system just doesn't tend to get damaged. It's it's hidden under the floor. It's out of the way. If you get to the point that you've damaged a RV's floor ducted heat system, the insurance company is probably writing you a check for a total loss because chances are something else went way haywire before that. So the reason that we have some of this flexi stuff around, sometimes people load cargo into a camper. Sometimes it shifts. Sometimes it punches a hole in that. Sometimes when a manufacturer is moving fast and building a camper, they'll close a drawer, crimp that stuff. Crump? Crimp? Rumple? Crump! RV nerdism number 37 just got born, ladies and gentlemen. Crump that stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm an idiot. And uh, you get the idea. Sometimes we'll just need to replace a quick length of it. It's 
not a major deal, and you probably never heard me talk about it because it's just one of those things that we just take care of, and it's not a high frequency thing. To give you an idea, this is all of it that we have in the shop. We don't keep that much in hand because we don't need to do it very often. So this stuff, by contrast, gives you that nice, perfect, smooth space where air can just zippity doo dah through here all the live long day. And that means it's more effective. Here's another thing about uh, floor vented heating. They give you, usually, more actual heat vents and they're larger. So we're getting more airflow out of bigger vents in more places. And you're going, what? what does he mean by all that? Okay, so the vents that come up out of the floor are usually about the same size, maybe a little bit bigger. And uh, what they do is they basically just cut an access panel there, install the vent, and whew, the heat comes flying right out. Lickety split. Uh, whereas with this stuff right here, this is like a four inch hose, but there are smaller things. And when I said more actual heat vents, this is one of those things that'll just boggle your mind. Um, I, I, I'm not sniping brands. If this factor is important to you, Please use this as a point of investigation when researching which RV you may or may not want to purchase. There are some RV companies out there that in uh, allegedly real big high dollar zero degree fifth wheels have one single four inch duct like under the island of a, uh, a big opposing living room super slide fifth wheel. Now that then cuts down to two two inch ducts. And that is sometimes the entire heat distribution system for the entire living room. Where you got to be careful with stuff like that is it might give you enough heat where you personally feel comfortable, but it's not often like getting into, through uh, the cabinets. It's not keeping the entire cabin temperature controlled. So what I have actually seen happen is I have pictures of people who have said, why is there snow and ice building up on the inside of my cabinetry when I've got my furnace on high? That can happen when you don't have enough airflow. So let's step away from RVs for a second. Let's go back to cars, which you're probably more familiar with. On the dashboard of your car, do you have one air conditioning duct, like vent? Or do you have like four or more? I bet you don't have one. And you're getting more airflow out of four, right? Like if you flip three off and you only had one, a little more air pushes through it, but it ain't the same, is it? That's what I'm talking about with floor ducted heating. It gets more airflow through more points more easily, allows your furnace to take a break, but it's not just sunshine and roses. Sunshine sounds warmer. I like sunshine. Because floor ducted heat vents are not without their drawbacks as well. I mentioned before, it's more expensive. Uh, remember that big crimping machine I told you about? That ain't cheap. The material itself, the, the actual metallic ducting, that ain't cheap. All the extra floor vents, each one of those a little more expensive than the little round like dryer sized vent ones. All that stuff adds up quickly, actually. So uh, it is a little more expensive thing. The argument to be made there is, well, can you put a price on comfort? There's, that's not a, that, that's a, not a me to answer yes or no question. That's a you to answer. I don't know. Does that apply to you or not? Um, the uh, other thing. Oh, and this is the main, uh, especially the main marketing pitch against floor ducted heating. There are some manufacturers who only do cabinet ducted heating, which is fine. We've talked about how there's benefits to it. But they will say things like, you'll get pet hair in those vents and you'll set your camper on fire. Uh... I'm pretty good at Google. <laughs> I live in the internet. I'm a child thereof. And I've done a lot of Googling and I've found exactly zero instances of pet hair causing a blaze. That's just not a thing. Can debris fall down into those vents? Absolutely. Can you step on them? Can it feel uncomfortable? Absolutely. Could you step on the vent and break it? Absolutely. Absolutely you could. Everything here has been a push and a pull. And I hope, again, you're willing to uh, appreciate the fact that we are giving you both sides of that. We are not being just one-sided or the other. 
We carry campers that have both systems. They both have different aspects that are beneficial to some people and not to uh, everybody. If there was one system that worked for everybody, there wouldn't be more than one system out there. Um, the thing is, there are some ways I think that you can more easily overcome the deficiencies of a floor ducted heat system. So when it comes to stuff getting in the vents, take a look at this. On Amazon for a little bit of no money delivered to your house in like two days if you're a Prime member and I don't know, probably three to seven if you're not, you can get a pack of filter pads to go inside, like under the, uh, the floor vent cover to keep the debris and the crap from ever getting down there. Awesome. So you can remove the debris and keep the good airflow. So what about the stepping on it thing? I can't tell you how many times I've seen RVs with and without floor ducted heating, any heat system. People come in on trade and they have little floor runner rugs all over the place because they can take it outside and beat the dirt out of it. Okay, well, if you're willing to do that, you could easily just place something over that vent. I'm, I'm in a mirror image. There we go. Over that vent right there and never have to worry about it. But, again, that's not for everybody. So is floor ducted heating the right thing for you? Well, are you going to be camping when it is really darn cold out? If so, this is probably a system that you should have on your radar. If not, then you could go with either system and be happy. If you just can't stand the idea of those floor vents and stuff getting down it. If you don't, I don't care, Josh, I'm not going to buy your filter pads. First of all, if that's the only thing stopping you from buying an RV, I'll buy your first set for you and they'll last you for the lifetime of that RV and probably the second RV that you purchase. But that's fine. If that's not your jelly and you don't jam that way, no big deal. Go with the uh, cabinet ducted heating and then you don't have to worry about it. Again, there's positives both ways. And finally, non-ducted heat systems and as you'll see that's when the furnace just basically blows straight into the room it doesn't have to go through any wishy-washy duct work i'm really talking about this just for the sake of being um as complete as possible because usually the uh you know the discussion of heating only tends to apply when we get into uh bigger rvs so quick benefits here it's the least expensive and the most efficient but efficient doesn't necessarily mean effective. Think back to that discussion we had about having one versus four AC vents on your dashboard. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, a couple more vents makes a, a big difference there. The uh, Basically, it has less distribution and... Oh, storage. You're going to lose a chunk of storage somewhere because of it. But again, you don't run into this a lot. You only tend to find this on small campers. And in this tiny cubic foot of space, this little camper that I'm in right now, that efficiency, that airflow, that distribution factor, it just doesn't matter. There's just not enough air here for that to really have to kick in and become a real factor. So everybody, thank you for joining today. Thanks for giving us a chance to meet you, to get you a show you around Halet RV a little bit, at least, and give you some info both ways. If you appreciate that fair, direct, no-nonsense approach, then give the guys and gals inside here a call. We'd love the chance to work with you. We are family owned and operated, been here since 1989. Largest independent dealer in the state of Michigan. We're in the top 50 in the nation actually, and top three in the state. Not too bad for a standalone mom and pop shop, right? Turns out people seem to appreciate this whole giving them information on the thing that they're spending all this money on kind of thing. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, follow along with us here at Halet RV. We look forward to hearing with you. doesn't matter if you're ready now or later. We're willing to take the time you need to get there. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. And now I want to, like, uh...